Hello, I'm Adrian Kennard, and once again I want to explain a little bit about a really simple bit of encryption. Now, this is very much the same sort of thing that I'm pretty sure we got in serial packets when I was a kid, little code wheels, this sort of thing. And it's a very simple form of encryption, but even though it's simple, it's completely uncrackable. Uh, GCHQ, NSA can't crack it. And it doesn't involve a computer. So, to start with, I have got uh, an alphabet I've come up with. It's just A to Z and 1 to 9. I've not actually used uh, 0, because if you want 0, you can use no. And the reason for this is I wanted to make this 36 letters altogether, and I wanted something to work as a sort of space as well. And the reason for 36, very simple, I can throw dice. So basically, you start off by making coding sheets, and these are the key. And I have here... Ah, a very old Monopoly set, and we've got some dice. And you would roll the first dice and the second dice, and that's a five and a five. So that would be a two that I put in my coding sheet. Okay, um, gets a bit tedious, but that is properly random. And you can obviously do this uh, in a room with no, uh, <laughs> unlike this room, with no computers or monitors or phones that could possibly be listening to you or watching you covertly. And you write out sequence... I've actually got 160 characters here for text messaging. If you're sending short messages, you don't need to be as long as this. Um, but you write out your random sequence of letters from your sheet, and um, you then copy those onto another sheet. So here's one I did earlier, just to make it a bit simpler. Let's show you here. So I've written out, and it's in this case, it's S star H seven eight eight U P M Q Z O star U S M M Q R. It's, ra it's a random string. And I've copied it onto the other sheet. And you'll need a few of these sheets. Now, you could, if you felt secure enough about doing it on a self-contained laptop or something that's not networked, um, you could do this using a computer and pseudo-random numbers, although computers aren't too bad at real random numbers these days. So I've got some examples here where I've actually used a computer to generate a complete list of 160 random characters and letters numbers and a copy and then another complete list and another copy, okay? Now, the way it works is you have a pile of these and you meet up with someone firsthand. Um, you know, before you're planning to do anything or communicate anything, and you make sure they've got one of each of these sheets. So they have those and you have these. And the same with these. So what we have is I've got these sheets and the other person has an identical set of sheets. Now, you may want to put them in numbered, sealed envelopes, lock them in a safe to make sure they're secure. You don't want anyone else ever seeing these sheets. You also need to be a little careful when you're working with a pen, as you don't really want other bits of paper underneath. You want to be writing on something completely separate, so you don't leave impressions on your other bits of paper. So, simple alphabet. Um, it's worth bearing in mind, of course, I'm using conventional European letters and numbers. This um, doesn't have to use European letters. It could be mapped from some completely different alphabet if you wanted to. So I'll put that aside. What we're also going to need to do is we're going to need to use a calculator. Now, this is my calculator sheet. This is nothing to do with the secret code. This is to let me do the absolutely awesome mathematics that's needed for this encryption. And bear in mind, if we're talking about banning encryption, we're banning mathematics here. And just to tell you how awesome this mathematics is, I'll explain. This is for adding up the position in my alphabet from the key and my message together. So star plus anything ends up with the same. A plus anything, well, A is 1. So A plus A is B, so that's 1 plus 1 is 2. Uh, B plus B is D, that's 2 plus 2 is 4. This is awesome mathematics. Um, now, you can imagine uh, this is going to get too big. So if I went for Z plus Z, that's 26 plus 26, which is, what, uh, 52. Um, that's bigger than my... No, that would be off here somewhere. So I need to take 36 off that, which brings it down to... What, 14? No, 16. I can't even do my own math. 16, I think. What letter is 16? Is it P? Let's have a look on the sheet. This is why it's easier. We go across there and we go down here. Oh, it's P. I did the maths right. 
So Z plus Z is P. So we're not talking about really complicated maths. We're talking about adding up and maybe subtracting 36. This sheet just makes that a little easier. So this is my coding sheet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write my message. Now, one of the things to bear in mind is that criminals don't necessarily need the real-time high bandwidth messaging we're used to. The message could be something really simple, like tonight, T-O-N-I-G-H-T. So that's a nice short message. Now, how do I do the encryption? Well, for each letter, I take, in this case, T and S, and I use my coding sheet, and I find T on one axis, and I find S on the other axis, and the two go together, and it comes out as a C. Okay, I find O and star. Well, star and anything comes out the same, so that's just O. Um, the fact that a letter can encode to itself is actually a useful thing. One of the flaws in the, enig in the Enigma machine used in the war is it could never encode letters itself, and that actually helped with the decoding, apparently. Um, N and H, so we'll take an N and an H, N, H, so that's a V, okay, and this is an I and a 7, so we'll take an I and, oh, seven's all the way down here, fortunately I've got letters in the top and bottom to make it easy, I and 7 is F, and we'll take a G and an 8, so a G and all the way down here to an 8, E, and an H and an 8, an H, and all the way down to an 8 here, that's H and 8 is F, and a T and a U, is the letter E, and what you would normally do is you would actually uh, continue now, thankfully, adding spaces or stars gives you the same letter, so you just write these down as well. So you'd actually send a longer message than you're sending. Otherwise, the fact you're only sending seven letters is a clue as to what the message is. So you'd actually end up sending this, this string, C-O-V-F-E-F-E-P-M-Q-Z-O-Star-U-S-M-M-Q-R-T. And that's what you'd send to the other person. So the other person, get, well, <laughs> before, before we even think about this, now I know what I'm sending, and I send it, I then destroy this completely. Burn it, shred it, whatever. Because then I don't have a key, and I can't be forced to hand over a key I don't have. So if I get raided later, I don't have the key. Now, the recipient of the message has the same coding sheet. We've agreed the order we're going to use the coding sheets, let's say. And they get their message that's C O V F E F E P. M, Q, Z. Uh, it actually becomes very clear if you're writing this down next to it. Oh, the message has clearly stopped here because I'm just seeing the same pattern. So, so I know the message is, I don't have to decode it all. I know the message is only seven characters at that point because they've used the, the random string. So to decode it, I use the same calculator sheet, but this time I'm subtracting. So I start with a C and I've got an S as my key. So we start with an S, S plus something is a C. So if we follow it down to a C and move across, it's a T. Um, o and star, it just comes out as O. Um, that's a V. So a V plus, um, so an H plus something is V. So we go down from H and we look for a V and we find it's N. Um, 7 plus something is an F. So we start with a 7. We go down to we find an F and go along and it's an I. Uh, e and 8, so we start with an 8 and we go down until we find an E and it's a G. Uh, F and H, so we do an H and we go down until we find uh, an F, and that's an H. And uh, an E and a U, so we start with a U and we go down until we find an E, that's a T. So the message is tonight. So I've decoded the message. Now, having decoded it, I can now throw this away as well, so there's no record of the message and there's no record of the, the key, but there is no way to crack this. You wouldn't know what this ciphertext means unless you have the key. And as some of you may notice, I actually created a convoluted key here. I didn't actually use a dice. I worked backwards to make a key that was going to create a particular ciphertext, just to demonstrate that actually any ciphertext can mean anything you like, depending on the key. So you can't even say someone who's got this ciphertext is actually 
you know, if you find this key, well, that key could be planted to make it look as if the person who sent that scrambled message was actually sending something else. So you can't even use that as evidence to say this is what they sent because someone can make up and plant a key on somebody. So um, similarly, there's nothing to stop you making your own key. Having decoded this, you could now make a new key that makes that message look like something else and keep those keys instead of shredding them. So if you do get raided, you use the key and the message and it says something completely innocent. Plausible deniability. You know, I was arranging a, a cup of coffee with someone. I wasn't planning anything nasty. So it's very secure encryption. And it's used this awesome system of mathematics called addition and subtraction. And I have a feeling the Tory government want to ban this. They think there's a computer vendor, a software vendor, a big company that provides encryption services and they can work with them to try and stop encryption. Well, this is the complexity you need for encryption. Pen, paper and dice. If you make it impossible to do it anywhere else, they can still do this. You can never win. You can't stop people using a pen and paper and dice in their own home. That's, you know, even if you made that illegal, it won't stop them doing it. So sorry, you're not going to win this battle. Let's use encryption for good. And we have to put up with the fact that it's a useful thing, just like the internet is, just like roads are, just like white vans are. They're all useful things for good. We can't ban them because bad people happen to also use them. Sorry. I hope that makes sense. Please tell your MP.